Hello, Nick Harris here, uh, UK-based illustrator working mostly in children's publishing. Today we're going to paint a bit of glass distortion. We're going to be working in Art Rage, uh, that's the layout you can see here, uh, but my preliminary sketching I did in Sketchbook Pro and I decided on this sort of composition. An ogre uh, thinking about preparing his lunch uh, because I did the sketch in Sketchbook Pro, I now need to import it to layer so I can use it uh, as a sort of guide. That's what I'm doing now. Uh, Sketchbook Pro's native format is a layered TIFF, but it will import it as a flat TIFF because ArtRage doesn't support that. And now it's on a layer, I'll just reduce the opacity uh, so I can use it as a guide. You can see I've done a bit of perspective work on it, but I will set up some rulers a bit later. Um, so that if there's any more lines I need to draw I can use the same perspective uh, but not have to rely completely on the lines I drew before. Just squaring things up a bit. Now we're not going to be using any clever filters or anything like that, that's not what I'm about. I just paint and draw. Uh, my favourite tools in Art Rage are the watercolour, the pencil, the chalk and the wet blender and we'll be using mostly a combination of those and what I'm using at the moment is the pencil tool uh, as you can see set pretty fine to just indicate a few shapes to add to the composition based on the same perspective uh, just using those lines as a guide for the moment the ones that are already there and I'm drawing a range and a, a cooking pot and a cooking hood um, he's going to be sat uh, in his kitchen diner, um, sharpening a knife, uh, looking at the little morsel he's planning to drop in the cooking pot. Typical fairy tale stuff. And that is some of the rulers. They, they come in the stencils palette. I've just scaled them down so they're not too obtrusive. And now I'll set up uh, a base one as a horizon line in case I ever need to reset that. Um, if you hold shift when you're dragging the lime green corners around the pivot points on the ruler um, it will restrain it to uh, certain angles you know perpendicular angles and then to set up the the actual points of perspective I just use there's a pin that uh, becomes visible on each ruler and you can move it around and if you set it on the corner you can make that the point of perspective and then pivot from the uh, swing it around from the other end like that yep um, now at the moment uh, they're, they're just in sort of standard mode. I prefer them in guide mode and they'll show up blue then and then when you draw near the rulers uh, the, the ruler will guide the line so that you, that you don't have to worry about being really accurate drawing along the edge, it will just do it almost automatically. But they're in the way at the moment so I will hide those Yeah, like that make them go away so that I, they're there if ever you need them and if you do find you need them at a later time you can make them reappear or with the visibility toggle like that uh, but in the meantime we've gone from actual live cursor to I've just done some stages here and I'm just building up the tone with the watercolour layers and adding a few bits of body colour put some explanations at the bottom just to reinforce what I'm doing uh, tone built up using the watercolour and then areas of colour blocked in on the layer below using the chalk tool and now you can see actually what I've been doing a bit clearer uh, I've worked on the drawing a bit more uh, I've added more layers of watercolour here uh, to build up the tones and another one to build up and a bit of specific detail like a bit of colour around his face, colour around the pot. I've dropped a dog in. Uh, it's a sort of bloodhoundy sort of dog. I, didn't, I don't use reference a lot. Um, that said, I have taken reference shots for the jar that we'll be using later. Um, uh, but when I've done a lot of watercolour layers and I get too many, it gets too confusing. Um, you come to a point where it's actually more efficient to merge them down and I merged about five down into that one layer highlighted there which then gives me more freedom to add more in ha! 
now I'm not over caffeinated this is what I'm like and now I've blocked in a bit of uh, color on the figure in the jam jar uh, golly her forehead's very high I'll have to do something about that a bit later and picked her out with uh, some sort of rim lighting almost uh, so that it's clear to see what's going on and there are those uh, reference shots I took of some jam jars that I told you about uh, but I didn't set up the correct lighting if I'd been f more forward thinking uh, and worked out how I was going to light the thing beforehand I would have s set up a light to shine through the jar as better reference uh, you have to make whatever you're painting fit into the scene otherwise it'll just look like it's stuck on uh, but just using the basic principles of light the shadow from their fire will cast uh, towards you like that from the jam jar uh, and the edge far away would supposedly be darker but as you can see with glass you get these odd glints and that's kind of what we're doing now uh, building up the shadow and then cutting cleaning it up a bit this is a combination of watercolor tool and a wet blender I think it's a wet blender I'm using now just to soften some of the edges now looking at the reference you'll see that when you look through the glass some of the edges are softened and that's what I've done there I've softened just the edge seen through the glass uh, using the wet blender uh, to contrast with the sharp edge you can just see above the jar a tiny bit I'm talking the blue pot here I'm not expecting you to be psychic I'll have to get rid of that line that's surrounding that blue pot because that's in the wrong place now you don't need the line they look better without it and also when you're looking through the jar look at the reference left the stuff you see through it and it's not crystal clear glass it's not high quality glass uh, and so the stuff you see through it is a bit blurry a bit distorted kind of what we're doing really glass distortion not distortion what's distortion distortion glass distortion now I'm tempted to um, do a little bit of uh, replicating him here and having his nice shown really big but I have to plan that out a bit better so it'll work I was trying to wing it and it wasn't going very well There's softening again uh, I'm tempted to duplicate that tonal layer uh, on the glass um, so that um, I can introduce a bit of condensation one of the jars on the reference shots I took had condensation on the inside which I, was kind of an unexpected bonus uh, which would make sense if she was if this figure was trapped in the jar uh, you get a little bit of condensation as she breathed and well, hopefully she's still breathing. She's sat there. I'm still building it up at the moment, that particular layer. Uh, but the point is, the stuff behind it, um, uh, not seen through the glass, uh, I've put line round to make it crisp. Uh, but the other stuff, um, seen through the glass, it doesn't have to be so clear. It doesn't have to be so pristine. Now, I've duplicated that layer. As I said, I might the layer, uh, the tonal layer on, on the glass, and that strengthened it and brought it forward more, in, uh, contrasting with the stuff behind. Uh, but you still need uh, crisp edges here and there. I'm talking about when you view through the glass, it distorts what you see beyond it. But actually, within the glass, you'll see that there are some quite crisp little highlights. Uh, but on this duplicated layer, I can now add some. Um, dark marks with the watercolor tool nothing too nothing too accurate nothing too specific just kind of blobs really uh, because if you look at the reference that's it it's not they're not crystal clear water drops uh, it just kind of hit, it makes it almost look like the glass has got lumps on it but again it's another water is another transparent medium for light to travel through now I will go onto another layer because the watercolour layers are set to a blend mode called Multiply uh, which makes them additive uh, but the highlights I need to be opaque uh, so they stand out more so I'm doing them on another layer and now even though I'm doing this very quickly very loosely roughly um, it's already having the sort of effect that I'd like it gives a bit of texture 
and interest to the surface of the glass and brings it forward in the scene. You know, this is a foreground element. Um, doesn't mean we don't want you to look at the background element, but in terms of the scene working, the background elements do have to look further away. Kind of self-explanatory, really. Uh, and uh, I'm wondering about doing a little bit of, I think, called encaustics. You know, like you have in 3D. I don't do any 3D, um, uh, but where you have light shining through glass and you get these kind of optical effects where it projects light down. I might try and give a little hint of that. It's just all to do with bringing the foreground interest more forward. See, that's probably a bit strong, so I will soften that. I'm working opaquely again with opaque paint. Um, yeah, that's quite nice. It, it gives form to the jar. Doesn't really. It kind of hints at another light source. Uh, off to off, off camera to the right. Perhaps a window, perhaps something like that. But then, if I'm going to add any interest to the glass, then the the lighting of that needs to reflect that. Now, the whole thing needs lightning a bit. So what i have done is I've added another layer. And using the chalk tool, this time set to soft light, I've just loosely uh, worked over it with the chalk with a warm colour to lift everything a bit. And add a texture at the same time. And I'm running out of time now, so I'll tighten up the stuff in the background a bit more. I'll make his drawing a bit tighter. He could do with some toes. Uh, first I'll do the dog a bit more, make that read a bit better. Now I've see I've done his toes, tighten things up a bit, have to get rid of the perspective lines. I'll just turn that layer off. It's bits and bobs all over the place, tightening things up here and there. I will strengthen the um, kind of image of him in the through the jar. There we are. I've made the dagger a bit more pronounced. It's very distorted and very vague, but it, you get the message. Uh, put some figures in the jars over the left hand side. Strengthen things a bit more and that'll be about it I think. So have fun playing with distortion through jars. You really can. See it's not accurate what I've done uh, but it's done for artistic impression and you can do that. Uh, so go away and have a good play. Bye for now.